Welcome to our talk about low-latency and session-oriented serverless workflows. My name is Manuel and I'm here with my colleague Parichat. In this talk, we want to explore how a serverless platform can support two important aspects of applications, the need for low-latency and handling of state. Serverless has a great prospect that says, developers should focus on application logic while the platform performs everything necessary to run it. And writing large distributed applications does not come easily. So I always liked the idea of an intelligent platform that would cover all the plumbing. But what I especially liked about serverless when it was coming up in 2015 is that whenever some part of my application is no longer needed, the platform would take it out. And the reason I want that from a platform are zombies. Back in 2008, an estimated 30% of servers in data centers were functionally dead. That means they appear alive, but the applications they're running haven't been accessed in at least six months. Despite all of our efforts in cloud computing, over the years that figure still remained the same. One third of the capacity in data centers is blocked by applications that no longer have a purpose and have been abandoned by their developers and their users. When we develop our pet applications, we want them to have enough resources to survive and be healthy. But we can't afford to have them run all over the place. So a good engineer would care for applications by overseeing that they well behave. That's also known to be a good part of DevOps. With every iteration, the automation improves, but it also causes a lot of distraction from developing new use cases. At Nokia Bell Labs, we had developed methods to augment the DevOps lifecycle by correlating metrics for root cause analysis, load prediction models to meet usage patterns, auto configuration tools, and of course, deep reinforcement learning to manage applications. But there are many pitfalls because every application is different, and more so, multiple deployments of the same application may see different usage and different resource consumption. With a human in the loop, the DevOps lifecycle is expensive to keep up with multiple production environments. Eventually, when developers and users have moved on to other services, the deployments often remain and turn servers into zombies. But serverless is different, because it takes full control over the execution and the deployment lifecycle. The function as a service model is a good start to offer a serverless platform. It asks developers to model the application around invocations, which allows the platform to do demand scaling. The first generation of platforms would use one container for every request. Admitting only one request at a time gives each execution a consistent amount of resources. And that is important when the platform charges by the resource time of an invocation. But it also causes cold starts. Every sudden increase in concurrency would face long queuing delays. And developers have gone to great lengths and sent bogus invocations just to have the platform keep their instances warm. That model works well for batch type jobs like data collection, analysis, or report generation, but in the telecom space, our functions are often on the control paths. They need to respond fast and have only a short execution time. That's why back in 2016, we had started to build our own platform. We'd allow more than one request at a time, and we'd use forking for process level isolation. Nucleo and the OpenFast Watchdog had implemented similar event loops. Process isolation is a good trade-off between fault isolation and startup time. When we admit more than one request per container, we can decouple the scaling decision and tune it for a better response time distribution. Today, the same can be found in Knative Autoscaling and Kedar. But now we've created a new challenge. Now we need to select the right event loop and tune demand-driven scaling. We can either choose to scale closer to demand and accept the occasional code start, or allocate larger containers in advance and have better multiplexing gain. When building a serverless platform, we don't want to expose this to the developer. We want a platform that can take a business objective and find the right trade-off between queuing delays and resource provisioning. But it doesn't stop with the function. We've looked further to reduce latencies in serverless applications. An application would comprise more than just one function. To build entire applications on serverless, we need a way to compose them. And a workflow isn't the worst idea. Workflows give functions a common context. A workflow describes which data are used as function inputs and what to do with the result. And the workflow also models a control flow that defines the order of invocations, or even branching. Depending on the workflow language, the model may use a task graph, a flowchart, or state chart. The CNCF has given serverless workflows a sandbox project to create a community-driven workflow language that meets our requirements as serverless practitioners. I think a foundation is the perfect environment to create a vendor-neutral specification. But how should the platform run a serverless workflow? We need to maintain the context of each activation, and we need to execute those small pieces of orchestration logic. Let's take this tiny workflow. It receives an event, executes function 1, makes a choice to execute either function 2 or 3, and emits a result. Let's assume most invocations would run function 1 and feed the result to function 2. Only some inputs would take the alternate path. 
A common way to orchestrate workflows is to run the workflow logic in one place. The engine would receive the request, evaluate the workflow and call functions. This may bear the risk of double billing and it requires invocations to go back and forth through the engine. Another approach is to distribute the workflow logic. We chop up the workflow into little pieces and deploy them alongside the functions. We could even set up an event chain here and use event routing to pass messages from container to container. This model yields a good throughput as it can benefit from pipelining, but latency-wise it has a lot of messaging overhead given that the functions and the logic pieces are very short executions. In this particular case, it might actually be affordable to collocate function 1 and function 2 and use very conservative scaling for fast completion time. And we can package function 3 separately with a very dynamic and ad hoc scaling. These are optimizations that DevOps would go through to refactor and optimize an application. In this example, the majority of invocations requires function 2. But we also might want to collocate functions when they share the same dependencies to save resources. Or when volatile data is passed between them that is not worth externalization. Serverless no longer treats the application as a black box. It takes control of the execution, the scaling, the load distribution, and the packaging of code. We want our platform to provide the same comfort to developers of low latency applications. Here are my key takeaways. We want serverless to support low latency applications. And we think function as a service is not there yet. Admitting one request at a time into a container didn't cut it. And packaging each function into a separate container still has a lot of optimization potential. To achieve our goal, we need the platform to not only manage functions, but entire workflows. And we're no longer going to hide in the dark from the zombies. Now, in the next part of our presentation, my colleague Parajat is going to look at different solutions to manage application state for session-oriented workflows. So till now, we have discussed optimizations for isolating function instances and creating function compositions. In that discussion, we also implicitly assumed that these function invocations are stateless. That is, an invocation to a function does not depend on its previous invocations. But often apps need to model stateful entities. And in these scenarios, which I will describe next, the optimizations we have discussed till now do not help with efficient state management. So take for example, let's say you want to model a stateful entity in your function, such as a shopping cart or a chat room. In this scenario, you need to maintain some state such as the list of users inside that chat room and the history of messages exchanged. And then you need to allow that state to be repeatedly modified depending on external actions such as addition or deletion of a user or sending or deleting a message. So the function modeling this needs repeated access to the state that is encapsulated and then allow that state to be modified in a way such that the order of actions is important so that the modeled entity moves from one consistent state to another. So that is an example of a stateful function. Another example could be when you're doing machine learning training, such as in reinforcement learning, where you need to model a physical system maintained as a state, and then you feed in a series of actions moving the state step by step towards an ultimate reward. Once again, here the function would need repeated quick access to the state and then allow that state to be modified such that the order of actions is important. Now, one simple way of managing state could be that every function invocation before it finishes externalizes its state, and the next invocation reads that state back in before proceeding ahead. Now, this keeps the function stateless, but it may also incur high latency or resource overheads depending on how big a state you need to externalize and how often you need to access it. And furthermore, if you allow this state to be concurrently updated from different function instances, it may lead to conflicting updates and it may make it harder for you to reason about the consistency of this data. So given these limitations, serverless platform providers have increasingly started providing built-in support for state management as well as stateful or session-oriented functions. And one such example is to provide support for long-running function instances which do not terminate. And furthermore, these function instances are uniquely addressable so that the very same instance can be invoked multiple times without having that instance lose its internal state. So essentially the function instance maintains in memory the state across function invocations. And furthermore, all the external events are processed in a serial manner by this function instance. So such a support is provided by KNX Microfunctions platform. Now, what this gives you 
is a low latency way of accessing strongly consistent data from the function instance. But this may also create a scalability bottleneck because now there is a single instance which is serially processing all the incoming events. And furthermore, uh, this approach may not be resource efficient depending on how big a state that you're trying to store because there is a function instance that is always running. Now another framework that provides support for stateful serverless functions is the Azure Entity Functions framework. So here the user can specify stateful entities by specifying which data it is encapsulating and it also specifies what actions can modify or read this data. And furthermore, this data is maintained both in memory and also made durable on a persistent store. And to avoid conflicts while updating this data, uh, all the external events are handled in a serialized manner by this stateful entity. So what that gives the developer is a low latency way of accessing strongly consistent data repeatedly over time without having to go to a durable store. And also, uh, these entities could be completely swapped out of memory if they are idle to make this approach resource efficient. But what you have lost out is that now that all the events are being processed in a serialized manner by a single entity, a scalability of this approach might be a concern. And furthermore, Azure Entity Functions themselves claim that they favor the durability of this data encapsulated by the entity over the latency of access of this data. So it is possible that it narrows down the scope of applications that can be modeled by Azure Entity Functions. Another platform for stateful serverless computing is the cloud state platform from Lightbent. And they push the idea of modeling stateful entities a step further. Here again, the user specifies a stateful entity by specifying what is the encapsulated state, which actions can modify that state. But the cloud state platform can now create replicas of that entity in different pods and can potentially load balance external events on top of these replicas. So what you have here is that the user function that is modeling the entity can independently modify or the read the state of that entity independent of other replicas and to avoid uh, conflicts created due to concurrent updates to that entity cloud state platform provides built-in support for crdts which are conflict free rep replicated data types and they encourage users to use crdts to model the internal state of the entity under the hood inside each pod which is hosting this user function modeling the entity there is an ACA proxy running as a sidecar. And these sidecars form a cluster within themselves with all the replica pods of that entity. And these sidecars in their memory maintain the internal state of that entity. They synchronize themselves with each other, propagate state updates and provide support for CRDTs. So what you get in this approach is that each entity instance has low latency access to read or update the locally available data. Replicas of these entities can be created, so this approach is scalable. And also, idle entities may be swapped out to durable store to make it resource efficient as well. But you, what you lose out on this approach is that now updates can happen on concurrent sites, at multiple sites. So the system has to settle down for eventually consistent state because it is possible that these sidecars may take some time in propagating states to each other. So the entity instance may sometimes see stale data. And furthermore, this particular implementation based on Akka sidecars, uh, cloud state says that if you quickly scale in or scale out a pod, then every time you do that, it leads to an expensive cluster rebalancing operation that may lead to significant latency overhead in this approach. So overall, I have described three serverless platforms that provide built-in support for stateful functions. This list is by no means exhaustive, and I believe that stateful serverless is not a solved problem yet. And there are numerous research projects that are also investigating stateful serverless, essentially trying to bring the function execution and the data it operates on as close as possible to each other. And one such project is called the Cloudburst project, and it essentially provides a data cache on every node where a function can execute. And it ensures that this function instance only interacts with this data cache for reads and writes, 
and if there is a data item not in the cache then it's pulled from the data global data store the cloudburst platform can also create replicas of these function instances and allow these replicas to independently modify the shared common state and to avoid conflicts arising from these concurrent updates it provides supports for lattice data da lattice data types which are very similar to conflict free replicated data types so these caches essentially synchronize themselves with each other periodically so what you have here in the cloudburst platform is that you can create replicas of these function instances so they provide some scalability for stateful serverless and these function instances can access data in a low latency manner from a local cache and this cache can also be used for efficiently sharing data between co-located function instances and cloudburst additionally provides uh, consistency guarantees for functions that are part of a workflow and they provide repeatable reads and causal consistency guarantees for those functions and i encourage you to read their paper about this but what they have to trade off here is that since the writes have can occur concurrently on multiple sites they too have to settle down for providing eventually consistent state because it can take some time for these caches to synchronize themselves so function instances may sometimes access stale data Another project called FAASM also offers a two-tiered state management system but what they do differently is that they have a local data cache but this cache uses shared memory mechanisms for exchanging data between co-locating co-located function instances so essentially it is really fast and there is no memory copying that is happening when this exchange takes place they do not offer they do not offer support for CRDTs and they let the function access a strongly consistent snapshot of the data because they use global read write logs uh, the platform also offers a lightweight function isolation mechanisms based on web assembly which also helps uh, them with this shared memory based exchange of data so both these projects cloudburst and fasm uh, essentially try to ship data close to where the function is executing and it also provides an efficient way of sharing data between co-located function instances and finally the third project which is called shredder actually reverses this paradigm and says that instead of shipping data let us ship the function code to the node where the data resides and then instantiate the function there so essentially in order to avoid shipping large amounts of data and since the function code is executing on the data node to keep the function instance isolation overhead low they use the concept of isolates that is provided by the v8 javascript engine and then instantiate functions using that so overall with all of this i'd like to reiterate the point that serverless platform providers should seriously consider providing built-in support for state management and stateful functions because numerous applications require that and there are various approaches that are being experimented with in both in industry and academia and i believe that uh, this topic of stateful serverless will remain hot in the serverless domain uh, in the near future so before i conclude i'd like to introduce knix microfunctions which is a serverless platform that we have been developing for some time uh, knix actually instantiates some of the optimizations we have discussed in this presentation and we are broadly targeting very low latency execution of serverless workflows so very briefly we allow concurrent executions of the same functions to hit the same container and within the container we isolate function invocations uses using process forking uh, we additionally provide explicit support for function compositions or workflows and we actually co-locate functions of a workflow inside a single container and we then provide a low latency communication mechanisms for these co-located functions uh, we use a distributed workflow logic instead of a centralized controller and we also provide support for state management we have support for session functions which are essentially long running addressable function instances and we also provide a data store that supports crdts for the developers to use Uh, please go to knix.io for more information, and we are also open source on GitHub. So, with that, we conclude this presentation. Uh, we thank you for your attention.
and we are happy to take more questions.